What's up guys, this is Mike Loris, going to be casting game number two, Games Board on the Radiant, X-Prez on the Dire Games Board, taking game number one very, very quickly, and well, they're going to now ban out the Ember Spirit instead of first picking him. Uh, I mean, Ember Spirit, this, in the last particular game, in the last game, it was up yeah. against the Death Prophet, and it was a contest, but I still think it really showed the power of that hero. Yeah, it is. It is a really, really strong hero as we saw in the on the uh, laning phase there. But I still feel like uh, he's a great hero, and I still love him. But I feel like there are still really easy ways to deal with it. But it, and I feel like um, like the side of X Prez had the ability to deal with it, but they just didn't. Yeah, or I they think weren't able to. And even if they did, the top lane was just such a catastrophic disaster that yeah. like, even if the Ember Spirit had like you know, 100% less gold per minute or something like that. They would still have to worry about, I think it was like a 7-1-7 seven, seven by the, near, near the end, or even better than that, something, Marana. Like, yeah. she was farmed out of her mind, and they had a dead hero in the Bristleback x -Prez, so uh, even though they might have had some tools, like we were talking about, uh, tools with dealing with the uh, Ember Spirit, it just wasn't enough just because of how poorly that top lane went. Yeah, and uh, I find it interesting that x -Prez actually banned out the Doom themselves instead of uh, waiting for the possibility to pick it up, but Games Board decided to go with the first pick, Bristleback, this time around. And so, um, you know, we'll be able to Bristleback from them this time. Maybe they'll show x -Prez how it's done. What do you think about the Bristleback first pick? Do you think that he's still worth the first pick, or is he sort of falling off a little bit? I think you, with... Especially after that first game, you uh, could assume there's going to be a little bit of metagaming, you know, you know, just mind games and uh -huh. playing around respect bands, stuff like that. I think you could afford to pick him up later. At the same time, picking up Bristleback very early is never really a bad idea. And, well, as far as metagaming goes, you could say, just get into the enemy's head. This is how you play yeah. Bristleback. We're going to show you how to do it. You guys just fucked up. Yeah, basically. Um... Now, with the Marana pickup, that's going to be Chandra Feed, because if he doesn't play the Doom, he plays the Marana. It mm -hmm. simple as that. Those are the two heroes that I've seen him play. That last game was the first time I've seen him play something other than that. So, Marana, hero he's more confident with, everything like that. Do you think his last performance is really going to affect him a lot with uh, with this game? I, I want to say no. I really do. Mm -hmm. But last game, he just he really just messed up, like severely messed up. Uh, what's good is that Marana is a very different hero from Bristleback. Like, if you play a Doom after Bristleback, you know, more similar than a Marana versus Bristleback, so you might be in that same mindset, but Marana, mm -hmm. an entirely new hero, ranged hero, has a lot more spells that, you know, do a lot more damage, so it should be a completely different mindset for Tenor Fee, so he'll, hopefully he could just refresh his mind with just a new hero, and it's going to be Marana with a Vengeful Spirit. Uh, Bristleback, if he does go to that top lane for Games Board, not going to have the best of times with those two stuns up there. Yeah, I mean, you can see that x are already banning out the Ancient Apparition. Don't want to see that from Games Board. Well, Games Board actually banned out the Visage. I I can't remember of any players on x that played the Visage particularly, but I don't know, maybe I'm forgetting one of them. And, uh, like, seconds. what do you think about Visage? I feel like he's also one of those heroes that uh, is really back. fallen off a lot, fallen from grace. Like, what do you think about his state of the game right now? I think he's always going to be a, just a really powerful support pick. As far as supports go, like, you can't find a support that does more damage than Visage, and then of course the familiars, if you control them right, are pretty much as powerful as a sixth hero. Uh, the fact mm -hmm. of the matter is though, at this level of play, you may not have a player that could play Visage so that he's actually worth that top tier pick. Like, mm -hmm. if I was gonna give it, if I was gonna play against Na'Vi, I would probably consider banning the Visage more so than these games, but uh, you know, he's, he's still a powerful pickup, but it, again, it depends a lot on who's actually playing it. And uh, what you if, if you don't know, then games. you can... What? You haven't watched my Visage games then, bro. You need to, you need to see some pro Visage. Not that you got nothing on me. Hey, I'm just saying, if I'm playing against you, I'll ban the Visage very highly. Mm -hmm. But uh, you don't know sometimes. Sometimes you yeah, just don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, clockwork the pickup here. What do you think about, like, a possible lifestealer even here for x -Prez? I see a lot of teams trying to go with the lifestealer-clockwork combination. Do you think it'd be good against Bristleback? Because it's one of those interesting combinations between, between the two of them. Lifestealer somewhat counters Bristleback. Bristleback somewhat counters Lifestealer. Um, well, they have a couple stuns to lock down the Queen of Pain, so actually going in on the Queen of Pain with a long-range initiation, hookshot into arrow, into a lifestealer beatdown won't be the worst idea in the world. Uh, that will make 
a Marana mid lane or something like that. It'll make the mm -hmm. lanes a little bit wonky, but uh, as far as Bristleback versus Lifestealer goes, I think Lifestealer, even though he will have to burn through that uh, Bristleback, Bristleback. <laughs> the fact of the matter is that he has stuns so that he could actually take that those couple of seconds to position himself in front, open the wounds, and then with the phase boots that he will have, he should be able to get the edge most of the time, at least in lane. Yeah. So with Queen of Pain, we I know we've talked about a couple of counters for her and how you can deal with it, but like OD is already banned out by Express. Viper is available, so mm -hmm. we might even see a Viper this time around, which I think could actually work out very, very well for them. And hey. there we go! I am I am a prophet. You're a soothsayer. Yep, I am. I know Dota so well. <laughs> Come at right. me, guys. Okay. Did you did you see that one coming? No, I did not. Uh, I didn't see that bones, one coming either. The bones did not say it would be Dazzle, so uh You need you new know. bones, man. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. Alright. Either so... that go look at birds. <laughs> so we have Viper versus Queen of Pain. It should be a very aggressive matchup. Both both yeah. those heroes are going to be wailing on each other for a good portion of that. Uh, the Dazzle pickup with the Rubik is fairly defensive, though. I mean, Dazzle's pretty good at keeping people alive versus damage over time spells like Viper or burst skills like Marana if you are quick enough. Usually we see Dazzle as a response to Doombringer. That's one of the... No, that's most of the time when you see Dazzle being picked up. Obviously, it's not going to be the case this game, seeing as though Doombringer is currently first banned out by Xprez, but there's nothing really too, too niche about Dazzle. I guess they could go for a lot of minus armor? Well, I feel like inherently with Bristleback, it's an amazing pick because Bristleback mm -hmm. is tanky. You add on more armor with Dazzle ulti, and you also add on the Shadow Wave heal as well as, uh, as well as Shallow Grave, and that Bristleback is not dying. It's just not going to happen. And against the side of Exprez, like, Vengeful Spirit is squishy enough that she will just die outright. Marana can't go and fight up against that one-on-one. -on -one. It's just not going to happen. Even Clockwork is not going to be able to deal with that level of survivability on a hero like Bristleback. And then you add on the fact that you have Queen of Pain, who's going to be, you know, jumping around and being the fragile thing that she is, but at the same time dealing the amount of damage she can. And it's going to be a disaster on the side of Exprez. Right, so with that, do you think that... I think something like a Clinks would be fantastic for Games Board if you... Expect that there's going to be a Dazzle Rubik Bristleback tri lane. Got to get someone to lock down that solo safe lane. And if you're going to be going for mass physical damage, you got the Bristleback already with the goo with the spines. Got that weave. You might as well go for the uh, physical master and the clinks. But X Prez with the last pick, going to be the Weaver. So it's probably going to be a support Marana? Viper mid? Um, possibly. Or uh, we could see some interesting things here. Like, we could possibly see a Weaver into the middle lane to deal with Queen of Pain, very doubtful, but it is possible. But it will most likely be Viper in the middle lane. I have seen dual lanes of Clockwork with somebody else sometimes, but yeah, I feel like it will be a support Marana, which then leaves Chen to have to go on the Weaver, which I've, another hero that I've never seen him actually play, and that could be a problem. Like, in this sort of a situation, you don't go with a hero that you're not sure about. You go with a hero that you know, you go with a hero that you know you can perform with, and you just go with it. Yeah, Weaver is a pretty easy hero, though, and the other team only has the Telekinesis so far. I mean, they have a lot of bursts th uh, through the Queen of Pain, but Dazzle not doing the most damage, Rubik not doing the most damage, Bristleback doing a lot of damage over time, like, it'll stack up slowly. So Weaver yeah. won't have to worry about too many things, but again, Games Board, they have an, a whole other hero to kind of shore up that fact that they don't have any stuns. I guess Queen of Pain could go for a quick Orchid. I mean, they usually do. It's not exactly out of the realm of possibility to go for a quick orchid then shut down that weaver but uh, still I think games board need to shore up their last lane and uh, well the ventral spirit Marana roam it could be pretty good against that queen of pain if you could catch her by surprise I'm actually thinking that what we might see is we might actually see a clockwork middle right now. Mm -hmm. Because what you would want to do is you'd run the Marana Ventral Spirit Viper, the tri lane from Games Board. And they're thinking right now on the side of x -Prize that Games Board is going to run the Bristleback as their solo safe lane. They're going to pick up another carrier right now and play really, really greedy. So then you put the Viper Ventral Spirit Marana versus that tri lane, Weaver versus Bristleback. It'll sort of even itself out. And nope, never mind. Throw it all out the window. Dial I'm wrong. <laughs> nope. Simple as that. <laughs> Alright, so we have a Lone Druid pick, which is again a pretty good hero to synergize with the Dazzle. You get some guaranteed nuke damage out of that uh, heal bomb. Also, the Weave is going to be absolutely terrifying when you put it on the Lone Druid. And uh, yeah. yeah, it probably is going to be, though, the lanes that we were talking about, but it's just a matter of what x are going to do to respond to this. Hyla's going to be playing the Marana, so it is going to be a support Marana. 
Yeah. Um. I mean, Marana support is really, really great if you have setups, and they do have setups. Clockwork, if you if somebody's inside of the cogs, the arrow is a large enough, like, hitbox, which is honestly pretty ridiculous. Valve, get your stuff together, because that thing should not hit half the targets that it hits. But mm -hmm. if you're inside the cog, you have a guaranteed hit with it, because the hitbox is larger that it covers the entire area inside of the cogs. Now, at the same time, you have Vengeful Spirit, who can set up your Viper, where if they're as slow as Viper can make them be, you'll be able to get the arrow off pretty damn easily. So... A lot of really good setup for the Marana, and if that Marana arrow hits, I always say a five second Marana arrow with any sort of follow up is a guaranteed dead hero. I would usually agree, but then again, there is a dazzle on the other end. So, uh, as yeah. far as roaming with the Marana as well as Ventral Spirit, they have to you know, either heavily consider the dazzle whenever they go in, or just go for him because he's going to be perma stunned anyway. But uh, either yeah. way, I think Games Board, their lanes are actually a little bit different from what we would have expected gonna be Lone Druid in the mid lane, Queen of Pain bottom, and uh, I think both teams are just in each other's heads right now. I think uh, Games Board definitely expecting the Viper mid so that yeah. they do this lane switch. It's gonna be... I don't think they're actually gonna lane switch. I think that the Viper versus the Lone Druid will end up pretty well for the Viper. Lone Druid is, himself is very, very squishy. 511 health. The Viper is the king of being able to force low health heroes out of the lane. And they're also now going to see the Lone Druid bear up here. So that's going to instantly make them think, okay, it's Lone Druid up here solo. We got this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to um, help their morale a little bit. But then it'll be Clockwork versus Queen of Pain down bottom. Now, if Clockwork gets the upper hand here, Queen of Pain can start to have a terrible, terrible time. But it's the same thing with the inverse. Yeah, I was thinking more around the lines of you would expect a Queen of Pain from Games Board. Uh, you expect the mid lane to be Queen of Pain on the Games Board side to be going up against the Viper, but Games Board mm -hmm. seemingly dodging that matchup and instead favoring the Lone Druid. Do you think the Lone Druid will fare better or worse than the Queen of Pain versus Viper? I think the Bear is, uh, I mean, at least for the early levels, is going to get his, you know, he's going to not have a fun time at all. <laughs> but uh, once he gets a little bit more experience, once he hits that entangle on the Bear, then I think versus the Viper, a Lone Druid versus Viper is a little bit better than the Queen of Pain versus Viper. I feel like sort of, but at the same time, it's going to be really, really difficult because if he ever moves past here and he moves mm -hmm. down into this area, Viper is going to get really, really easy free right clicks on him with his poison attack while generating no creep aggro, which is going to be a huge problem for him to have to try and deal with. Now, at the same time, he is going to be very tanky once he once he hits his level six finally. Yeah. So let's uh let's get the formalities out of the way first. We have games yeah. board. On their side, we have on the top side, it's going to be Orc playing the Dazzle support along with Weezer's Rubik once again. He's going to lift up Chenner Feed, but good luck killing a Weaver this early. Uh, Gazzy's yeah. going to be playing the Bristleback mid lane. It is going to be Sasu on the Lone Druid. Bottom lane is Taboo's Queen of Pain. Yep. And then we're going to be seeing on the side of yeah, X-Prez, we're going to be seeing Chenner Feed playing on the Weaver as their carry Silver Flash. She's getting some reckless in on Orc. She's, or he's playing as the Vengeful Spirit. Hyla, she is playing as the Marana. Then on the bottom lane, we're going to be seeing uh, Jokers going to be playing as the Viper. And finally in the middle lane, Yosh as the uh, Clockwork now. So they did in fact switch over the lanes and uh, decided to go with this lane, lane setup instead. Yeah, Clockwork with the Cogs isn't actually going to help him too, too much against the bear, mostly because you only pop off the Cogs once the bear is actually on top of you. But mm -hmm. uh, Joker's instantly going down to the bot lane, and then instantly Taboo pouring on the aggression. We see one point Nether Toxin, one point Corrosive Skin, so he can't even get that free harassment just yet. So it looks like Viper vs. Queen of Pain looking to be a rough matchup for the Viper, though. Uh, Yosh will get the solo lane experience from mid lane, possibly help out that top lane where it looks like games board are falling a little bit behind. 5 for 3, 4 for 3. Uh, never yeah. mind, Tenderfeet actually doesn't have any CS at all. <laughs> Not looking that great, really. And that's the thing I was talking about. He's used to certain heroes, and, you know, when he plays ones that he's not used to, even if they're Weaver, who is pretty easy to last hit with, it just causes difficulty. Yeah, like, uh, and oh, at, least, at the very least, he's going to stay uh, safe. And, and Joker down bottom gets caught out. Taboo eh, getting some tower hits, but was able to get him down low enough with the Shadow Strike, and then just came right in with a Scream of Pain and was able to take care of him. That's, uh, 
Not really what I would expect. Tebu getting a lot of mileage out of this lane, though. At the same time, Joker's forced into two points across skin top side. Silver Flash gonna get lifted up. Gazior gonna take a magic pistol straight to the face. Silver Flash constantly taking some right clicks, but there's no more crowd control here. No poison touch just yet. Yeah, Chenerfeed can try to go for Gazior. The sh the uh, grave will save Gazior for now, but Chenerfeed still in the area. Has got to watch out. There's no more mana on the Bristleback. One more quill spray with that many quills would bring Weaver very close to death, if not kill him outright. So everyone's going to pop their salves, take a nice drink. Arrow going to fly through. Wazer is going to take that one. And then Chen Feed going to dash forward. Is there another shallow grave? There is not. Wazer's going to go down, but it's going to be a one-for-one -one trade. Him for Silver Flash. Pretty even as far as trades go. And it looks yep. like everything else is just going to die down. Yeah, Chen Feed going to take a couple of right clicks from the bristle back, but he'll be fine. He'll be able to just run right on out and be, uh, be generally okay. Now, down bottom, we see the Queen of Pain actually going and uh, got herself a bottle. Grabbed an invis room now, not going to be able to go for jokers. Not going to really be able to do that much to him in terms of kill him, but we'll be able to get some harassment damage using this thing. Quick scream of pain. Uh, that's and two points shadow of shadow strike. strike. That's a lot of damage, a lot of slow. Taboo's going to really do work right now, but then again, jokers has that corrosive skin. Taboo dropping very low, and yeah. looks like he'll be forced to back up, but still, three bottle charges on the Queen of Pain. Absolutely no more regeneration for the Viper. Taboo's just got to back off, wait for this corrosive skin to stop rocking. Then he could think about diving forward again after he chugs his bottle. The problem is that Viper, of course, has another toxin. And if Queen of Pain even tries to go forward, like you see the Jokers right now, even with his low HP, is playing very aggressively versus Taboo because he knows that if he tries to go in, it doesn't instantly kill him. A couple of right clicks will be more than enough to end him. But Turn then again, there. this could happen. Uh, yeah. Well, he's going to be close, but still, Taboo gets the kill. No. It's Not quite. Exquisite. Viper just needs a little bit more, even just levels, but actually, oh, arrow flying the top lane, not going to be able to hit anybody, just blitz the uh, wick right there. Chenerfee going to be able to Sakuchi away, Silver Flash also gets a stun off, but not going to be able to get anything off of it besides a little bit more safety for Chenerfee, who is, Chen, white, no, bad, bad idea, run away. Fade bolt run. Oh, Ugh. man. Chen or feed, why? Why you play heroes <laughs> like this? Not I was all about heroes to are say. Doom. I was about to say, Weaver in this particular lane is never going to die ever unless he really, really messes up, like runs out of mana or something. Like games where they're trying to burst him down, two points in Shadow Wave for that, you know, physical burst kind of thing going on. Gazir can't really do much versus a, uh, versus a Weaver, and then just try to get him down within that telekinesis duration. But that's not enough. They need another hero up here. Lone Druid definitely isn't going to be doing anything. They need the Queen of Pain for burst. Arrow gonna fly through. Wizard once again gonna take that one straight to the face. However, there's this time there is a grave, magic missile, and there's the grave. It will not save him for very long, however. I think he's still screwed. Silver Flash, though, might be the trade. Once again, it's going to be support for support. Gas here. Can get one more Quill Spray out. Chenner Feed. Can look to pick this kill up. There's the heal again. Chenner Feed. And he might actually die. No cooldowns. Double kill for Gas here on this top lane. Yeah. This is, this is how you play a Bristleback. You play aggressively, but not too aggressively. And he's really capitalizing on the fact that the other team, the side of x -Prez in this lane, is just not really... Oh, Queen of Pain, Tabu decides to go and show up. Hyla, she needs to try and run. Leap into the oh, trees. Oh, Queen of Pain. And, oh! The trees! The jukes! And now Tabu is in... Well, he could blink into the trees. He's gonna be... He'll be Actually, tied. just walk out. Okay. Yeah. Shenner feed, there's no way that he can even try and fight up against Taboo here. Taboo has level 7, so that's level 4 in the Scream of Pain. If Chen even tried to show himself there fighting him, fighting him would have died instantly. By the way, we've kind of been ignoring this mid lane. Sasu is 35 for 19, and Yosh is 9 for 2. This clockwork yeah. is absolutely getting destroyed in this mid lane. He's not level 6 yet, whereas the uh, enemy lone druid is level 7. Yosh is really, really struggling. I think uh, they probably would want to have a Viper on this lane. Oh, wow. I think I think a Viper in that lane would be pretty nice, man. If only they were able to... Oh, wait a second. If only but... there was some way to change lanes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 135 gold item would be really good right now, but I don't I don't know if there is one. Either way, though, enough of the passive aggressive sarcasm. <laughs> That's a 7-minute gonna... Midas for Lone Druid, by the way, and Clockwork... I mean, he got a haste rune, and if he was level 6, he would have instantly gone to the mid lane, almost guaranteed. But no hook shot, and haste rune or not, it could be really difficult. But there, there we go, Wizard. Once again, he's really good at taking these arrows. Chenerfee can take a little bit of damage. He does have 10 stick charges. Silver Flash is going to pop his stick charges, try to get out, but Gazier should be able to take that trade. It is, once again, the same exact trade. Let's see if Chenerfee is going to make it a, exactly the same trade. Gonna Shikuchi away, Arrow gonna fly, hit onto Dazzle, Chenerfeed has one hit away, 4 HP, here comes Yosh with the haste, you're gonna chase down a courier, 
Yosh, you gotta help your team. He does take down the Courier, which is, I guess, something. He's getting lifted up into the air. In the meantime, top side, still Gazzar as well as Orc. Gonna clean up everyone. It's a triple kill for Gazzar. They're gonna catch Yosh, perhaps, but no. Still, the Hastrian's gonna run out. Gazzar, is he gonna chase this one down? Arcane Boots have actually been picked up on the Bristleback. I actually don't hate this choice, given the circumstances. Now, Yosh, gonna find some cover in the shadow of his Tier 1 tower. Yosh might still be in a little bit of trouble. Gazzar going to turn his back to the Magic Missile. Take a Rocket Flare as well. Everyone and their mom is teleporting up to this top lane. Hyla going to throw an arrow, and it's going to just barely miss. Oh, Gazzer man. collects 6-0-0 on him. Yeah, he is uh, He is getting to be very, very large. You can see also that he is going for the back for his team. So, yeah, that's... I really do agree with the mana boots in this case, um, especially if you are going for the uh, for the mech for your team. But usually on the bristleback, I prefer to well, basically everybody prefers to go for the power trend. Mm -hmm. I go for something a little bit different after that. I like armlet on him. I don't know about you, but I think you like what? Uh, armlet on bristleback. Oh yeah, it's amazing. Oh, armlet bristleback is amazing. It's great. Uh, Desolator after that is usually my my next choice. Yeah, I'm that type of player. I, could use a little help. I don't go that deep into the damage, <laughs> but I'm all about the armlet on bristleback. You yeah. just hit like a truck when you get a couple of stacks of warpath and you know one or two goos on them. It's brutal. But Joker's in the bottom lane. Taboo gets off the Scream of Pain and then a Shadow Strike. And he's already just so low right now. You see he's actually going to be trying to go for a Hood of Defiance here, having picked up two Rings of Regen. Not a usual item that we'll see picked up even any sort of early nature on a... Uh, on a Viper, so really just trying to be able to deal with this Queen of Pain harassment, but at the same time, he'll have to deal then with the non-magic damage on the side of Games Board right afterwards. And most of the damage on Games Board is not magic damage. Bristleback, yeah. pure physical. Dazzle, pure physical as well. Lone Druid, I mean, he has some magic damage. He's, he's going to get the Radiance. It'll help a little bit, but for the most part, he's also physical. So this Hood pick, if it is in fact going to be a Hood, which it should be given the fact that there are two rings, and then he's just going to get Sonic Wave down in the bottom lane. Uh, it's a purely reactive choice, and, you know, I'm all for being reactive, but sometimes going that deep into your reactivity is going to cost you. Yeah. It's like, sometimes, or later on in the game, if it was really that big of a problem, yes, it would have been good, but mm -hmm. for the amount of actual farm he's been getting, it is not worth it at all. He's going to be getting it way too late for it to be effective. And at the same time, his team at this point is really counting him to be able to start to go around in the map and have an actual impact, and Hood is not an impact item. Hey, I'm going to sit here and farm more and be able to deal and be able to take some more uh, punishment from the Queen of Pain. Guys, you're going to take a magic missile. Chenerfi going to start unloading Silver Flash, though, taking some damage as well. They're going to throw a stun onto Dazzle. Looks like they want to eliminate the Shallow Grave. There's a pretty good Star Storm from Hyla hitting onto pretty much everyone. Chenerfi will focus down that Dazzle. That'll be one. Guys, you're going to get tagged with the Poison Attack. Level 4, it's a lot of slow. Magic Missile as well. Bristleback or not, he's going to go down. Silver Flash can take a, another Fade Bolt, but now Weezer tagged with that Poison. Chenerfi is going to lay the damage on. It's a double kill for him. And finally, x -Prez gets something that benefits them on their side yep. of the map. If there's anything that's going to help to bring him back into this match, that, those types of fights are going to be what it is. They need to get more of those types of kills. Three for nothing. Bringing them back from 9-3 to three to 9-6 to six now. So, really big fight there for them and really going to help to bring them back in. But at the same time, Shenrafeed is going to need to go back to his uh, back to his fountain after that. He's just way too low. Same exact thing with Hyla, really, in all honesty. They just don't have the regen to be able to stay here. And at the same exact time, Sasu is farming up. He's, like, rolling in the dough. He is absolutely filthy rich right now. Uh, Radiance should be the item, given how much of an easy time he's having against Yosh. And really, Clockwork hasn't been doing anything. He's been trying to recover from this very difficult mid lane that he's been facing. He went to the top lane once, got a courier kill, but that's about it. That He's been pretty much just playing PvE or PV Bear. Yeah, not very fun to have to try and go up against something like that. Now... At the same time, though, I don't really 100% agree with the Radiance this game. I feel like it's an even better impact item would be something like the Maelstrom early on, or even a Basher, just to be even more aggressive than they are right now. But at the same time, if he's able to get the Radiance quickly enough, it would be good. The only evidence I have against is the fact that you went for a Hand of Might that early on, and then Phase Boots on the Bear, as well as mm -hmm. regular Boots on the uh, actual Bruin. Yeah, he's taking so, a lot of uh, pauses between the uh, usual Radiance, you know, 0 to 3800 rush. But... Yeah. Uh, in my mind, Radiance on the Lone Druid is objectively the best item that you could get, but mm -hmm. uh, it depends, of course, on the farm. It always depends on the farm. Chenerfeed, where are you going? He just teleported shikuchi around, and then now he's trying to pick a fight. He's getting it lifted up into the air. Physical Bomb from the Dazzle going to be doing some pretty high damage, but there's a time lapse. Chenerfeed 
is playing some games, but this is a very dangerous game to play with all these heals coming out from Dazzle. Arcane Boots making sure his mana pool is topped off. Here comes Yosh. He's very low, but he has a hookshot arrow. Gonna fly. Will hit onto Dazzle. That didn't look like it was supposed to hit, but it did. Yeah. The hookshot in from Yosh as well. Dazzle, no time for the grave. Weezer gonna try to make an escape, but it's not going to. Well, actually, Taboo coming in, unloading onto everyone. Yosh gonna try to get a kill onto Weezer. He will get the trade. Now, Gezi are trying to finish off Chen or Feed. Chen or Feed, you probably don't want to go that way because of Scream Pain in 3, 2, 1. There you go. He's going to go down. Here comes Jokers, though. Taboo going to blink straight into the trees. Gezi is going to go down at the very least two Jokers. And yep. Lone Druid still doing his own thing. I think he took down a tower all the while. Silver so Flash going to look to get a magic missile onto Taboo. That won't happen. Jokers is going to cut Taboo off. That also won't happen. But he might actually catch Dazzle. Dazzle, where are you going? No, don't go that way. The uh, Weezer is here to throw the Viper back. And it looks like they have enough slows to keep Viper off of them. But yep. that was a 4v5. And Gainsboard took that one pretty well. I think they uh, that was a 4 for 3. Yeah. Uh, in a 5v4. Yeah, so X, X Price at the same time, well, they might not have come out necessarily on top with that one. It does still shed some, shed some light on the fact that they can still fight. And there, whenever you can fight, there is still the chance for, you know, getting back into the game and making sure that you're able to keep up with, uh, with the game. That Rubik, when he uses a right click, is really, really weird. Like the way that his staff looks. I just realized that. I love the particle effect. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I didn't even notice that. That's awesome. You know, want to buy. Like a real Magus or whatever it's called, but <laughs> yeah, that, they can fight, but they were fighting 4v5. Taboo gonna get caught by Jokers. He should be fine to blink out, unless he blinks straight into Chen or Feed. No, he's gonna blink north, has a TP scroll uh, up in a couple seconds, and he should be just fine, unless random arrow from high. Oh. Well, I mean, it was a good attempt, I guess. No sing sing this game. Sad day. That's how you test if somebody sing sing is if he would have hit that arrow 100%. <laughs> of course, of course they're gonna run north. <laughs> why would they run anywhere else? It only makes sense. Why, why would they move anywhere else? It's going to be right there, man. It's like sing sing and Dendi. I think have map hacks. I honestly, I do. It's pretty ridiculous sometimes. Wouldn't that be a scandal if it turned out they actually were map hacking? <laughs> that would be pretty ridiculous. That would be actually. ridiculous. The entire time. <laughs> It's like a, a real Lance Armstrong thing going on there. Oh god. Like we have to take away all your prizes because you've been map hacking for the past like five, ten years. Oh man. That would be that would be quite the uh quite the news headline, I guess, for Dota. Yeah, that would be I would love to see that, like only for popcorn, but I yeah. don't really want to see that because I love the players, but okay, we might see a scuffle in the uh dire forest right now. Looks like, uh, well, the Mirana ultimate is going to pop off, and Gazer is going to see everyone. There's a lot of wards there. Wizard's going to get tagged with stuns, as well as poison. Mech is going to fly, but that's not going to be enough. Now Gazer is going to take an arrow straight to the face. But here comes the lone druid bear. He's been playing his own game the entire time. Can he get an entangle? Oh, you bet he can. Joker is going to get rooted in place. Tebu going to unleash on him. There goes one. Silver Flash going to try to escape from the Bristleback. That's not going to happen either. In the meantime, uh, Yosh has taken down one kill, but... Weaver going to jump right in, get entangled. I think that was the first entangle. I wasn't quite watching that portion yeah, of the fight. But Sasu yeah. collects, and that's going to give him enough money for his relic. 15 minutes in, Hannah Midas, Phase Boots, Brown Boots, and a relic. Yep. Two times first it entangles. Like, I, I don't understand some Lone Druids. I, like, I'll play Lone Druid occasionally, and I will not get a single root until I go into the jungle, and the first little creep I hit entangle every single time. But then heroes, yeah. nope, no entangles at all. Just yeah, that's just the way it goes, though. Yeah. I and tend to be pretty lucky with entangles, so I, I can't really share the sentiment, but... Guess what's happening yeah, the I'm, time, I'm pretty though, lucky Dota over, player. If you go over to the net worth at the same time, that's a scary, scary chart on the side there. 9,200 oh net worth for this lone druid. 7,400 for the bristleback. 6,700 for the queen of pain. And then finally, finally, the highest on X-Prez is 4,100 on... Guess who? Clockwork! I don't, I don't know how that one happened, but, you know... Uh, it was the so fact that Cheddar Feed, he was constantly fighting and not getting last hits on the top side. I mean, when I looked, I expected Weaver to have a lot more CS. Taboo can take an arrow on the bottom lane, not going to result into anything. But uh, Cheddar Feed, he wasn't getting that much CS, despite the fact that it looked like he should have been. They were constantly fighting. I mean, they kept on losing Silver Flash. They kept on gaining uh, the Rubik in exchange. But ultimately, the Weaver wasn't actually getting any CS, whereas the Bristleback was. Yeah. 
And now we have the Viper Strike available from Weezer right now. Oh, arrow will fly. Will hit on the Dazzle. And now here comes the initiation in from Yosh, jumping in with his hook shot, but not going to be able to even get the cogs off there. And then Fate Bolt comes in, going to be able to kill off both the Vengeful Spear as well as the Clockwork and also help with the death of the Viper. That's three dead already. There's nobody else here to even try and defend right now. And this is going to be the death of the T1 Tower in the bottom lane. Queen of Pain getting the last hit there. Even more gold being infused into their team. Lone Druid looks like he has, in fact, decided to go for the Radiance. Sacred Relic is already up on the bear. Recipe is also already on the way. So that's a 17 and a half minute Radiance with the other items that he picked up beforehand. Yeah, Lone Druid is absolutely stacked right now, and he wasn't even in that fight. I think that fight was made so clean by the fact that Taboo got a three-man Sonic Wave. They just all conveniently lined up nice and in a line. And then, of course, Sonic Wave dropping 475 damage onto all of them. Yeah, that'll probably win you the fight at this stage of the game. So yeah, Queen of Pain getting that, and the fact that there were no cogs. Weezer right on point with that telekinesis. I mean, as soon as your Dazzle gets hit, as soon as anyone gets hit with an arrow, you're probably going to be spamming that telekinesis, because you know what's coming. Yeah, you want to you want to make sure that they are able to you know keep that dazzle alive and just dazzle just is able to do so well. I love him as a hero for what he does with his heals, with his um, armor gain from his ultimate, and of course with the shallow grave. It's just so so powerful of a hero. But the thing is that even with Queen of Pain and her ultimate, like her ultimate, it just deals so much damage, especially because of the fact that Express they're just all squishy. Viper should be pretty tanky, but he's just not right now. Only 1100 HP because he got completely shut down in the lane. And now Roshan going to be the target. And it's 18 minutes in, and he still doesn't even have a hood yet. That is yep. some, uh, I mean, when you, especially when you compare that to a, to the lone druid, it gets uh, real depressing real quickly. This Roshan is going to drop very quickly. Arrow going to fly. Once again, Weezer, he's really good at taking these arrows. He's going to live yeah. this time, and looks like it's just going to be a free Roshan. I would make another Super Bowl joke, but I feel like it's not relevant anymore, sadly. <laughs> The one sport, sporting event I watch all year except for curling and uh, can no longer reference it. Sad day. Yeah, now the Olympics is over, over, is over oh, as well. Man. Oh, I know. Joker's he got sheeped up. Queen of Pain rushed a sheep stick. Arrow going to fly. Narrowly dodged. Silver Flash going to bail the Viper out for now. There's a Maran Ultimate. Another layer of bailout. But look at Gazjord stacked up on those mid-game items. Flads, yep. Vanguard, Mech, and uh, Staff of Wizardry. What do you think about that? What do you think? Dagon? Rod of Atos. I'm, I'm thinking Rod of Atos. Rod of Atos. Yeah, I'm thinking that he just wants to be able to have the little bit of extra slow, well, the real lot of extra slow, as well as the great yeah, HP. The intelligence is awesome. It'll either be that, or I feel like he'll try and go for something like even a Necro book would be a fun stop one to tower. be able to watch. Oh, you're and right on the... Word of Defiance. You're right on the Rod of Atos. Second Staff of Wizardry picked up. Rod of, it, Rod of Owie. Yep. And it's uh, not a terrible item on Bristleback, especially if you are this far ahead. You can afford to get whatever you want. An extra slow is going to be nice. Yoshi's going to jump right in. He's going to latch Taboo, but Taboo going to get graved. I mean, she will blink out. Sonic Wave is up. Gazzy on the front lines will take a Magic Missile, though, from the back. He is facing the wrong way, but Sasu, with the Radiance, is just running everywhere. No matter what, no one can stop this bear. His bear actually might die, but he has another one to resummon right after if he really wants to. Chenerfeed will get out of there alive. And uh, x -Prez, they only lose two. It looked like it could have been a lot worse, but this is a real scary thing. Dazzle, he has maxed out in... Uh, he has his heal maxed out. He's going to restore people very quickly. And Lone Druid actually picking up the Weaver kill. Now Joker's getting a hexed up. First hit and tangle, because why not? Uh, Weezer is still alive. 15 stick charges on him. Heals from Dazzle are going to continuously flow, seeing as though they have one, two sets of arcane boots, three sets of arcane boots. Infinite mana, infinite heals. Easy push. I would not be surprised if the GG comes out from x Press here in the next couple of minutes, just because, like, how do you stop this? They're about to rotate right from the top lane down to the bottom lane. This bear is way too big. Queen of Pain is way too big. Bristleback is way too big. Dazzle and Rubik are also just, they're big. They have mana boots up right now, which is a great, great item for them both to have, and they also both have gold. There's 3,100 gold on Rubik. Yeah, 3k gold on Rubik. Uh, why not? Yeah, Divine Rapier, it's time, but... Yes. I would say even if Xprez had double their double the value on the clockwork, double the value on the weaver, it still just won't be enough. They don't have the right the right amount of gold on the right heroes. Hell, they don't have any gold on any of the heroes. To be honest, they're gonna all try to go for Gas here, but he is just killing them all. He was literally tanking four of them for like five seconds, and he lives. Yeah, and look at look at the actual gold graph right now. Like, that's ridiculous. Oh, that's Jesus. over That's over a thousand gold per minute difference, and experience is almost the same exact story. But there's the GG. Games board able to completely dominate this final uh, series here. 
And we're over and done with this one in like an hour, basically. Nice and that. clean. 14 minutes, 21 minutes, of course, with the drafts on top of that. Yeah, yeah. about an hour. I would say that Gazier has successfully shown Xprez how to play the Bristleback. Yep. Of yeah. course, you know, really? 11, 2, 13, 10, 0, 7, 5, 0, 5. Supports, their scores aren't as glorious, but still 17 assists on that Rubik, 10 on the Dazzle. Oh, yeah. It was just everything came together correctly for Games Board in this game. Yeah. The amazing thing also is that Rubik only only six deaths with the amount of arrow that he was able to catch with his body. Like, that's oh, yeah. that's a great, great thing for him to be able to have. Hey, every time, arrow he catches is one less that the Bristleback catches. Yeah, basically. Although, at the same time, Bristleback can catch an arrow perfectly fine. I think he'd, uh... I think he'd sort of be able to brush that one off. Be okay. Probably. But, uh, at the same time, thanks everyone for tuning in. You can catch me at twitch.tv slash Nistagord and at um, Twitter at, at Nistagord Dota. Thank you very much for tuning in. Where can they find you, buddy? Uh, I'm on twitch.tv slash Mike Loris. Mike Loris also is my Twitter handle. Uh, and that should be it. That's going to conclude Season 2, Week 5 of League of Dota. Game board, wow. Games Board taking it 2-0 over Xprez. And uh, I think we'll probably see all you guys next week. Yeah, hopefully. Um, I'm not going to be here Saturday next week, but I will be back again for the uh, semifinals and finals matches on Sunday. But as a whole, guys, thank you very much, and we'll see you all next week. GG, guys. GG!